those who belong to Jesus are supposed to enjoy the never of heaven. Eternal life, never of heaven. Rather, your physical life, your physical life, your nature, physical life, your bodily life is a parable, is a parable about the true, about the true eternal life. About the true eternal life. And Jesus, Jesus is eternal life. Jesus is God's eternal life. The kingdom of heaven, the place Jesus who has become the son of man, who has become flesh, a human, who has become the son of man, is stayed. He is seated on the throne of God in heaven. Where angels of righteousness, there are numerous angels in heaven. Where angels of righteousness are there. Where believers will enjoy eternal life after being resurrected. Amen. Amen. Oh, there are three, three heavens. Three heavens. Uh, first heaven. The uh, first heaven. Above the earth, above the earth, above the earth. The expanse of the sky, the expanse of the sky above the earth. The expanse, expanse of the sky, sky above the earth, above the earth. Head, head of the sky, head of the sky, above, above the earth, above the earth. Across which, across which, birds, birds fly, right? Where birds fly. Birds fly. Birds fly.
even though in the human side you can be a great bishop, a great pastor, but you can never receive God in your life. You must not be a sympathy. You must not be a sympathy. Amen. Even though you are uh, a great pastor in human side, but if you are not a true servant of God in God's time, you are a hypocrite. <coughs> so you must not, you must not become a hypocrite. Okay? Hypocrite. Eh? Make a strong decision. Not to become a hypocrite. And not to become a blind guy. A blind guy. Amen. Most of you can, cannot help but recognize that you are a blind guy. You are a blind guy. Right? Because you do not know the Bible at all. You are deep set. You are a blind guy. Hey, just like it is written in the book of Matthew chapter 23 or 33, you must not, you must not be a snake, you must not be a snake. Jesus, Jesus called the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You snakes, you snakes, you prune a Bible. How can you how can you escape from being condemned to hell? Wow, it was very terrible. The Pharisees were the most enthusiastic people in the times of Jesus. When the Son of God had appeared for the first time in this human human world. The Pharisees were the most enthusiastic, enthusiastic, the most faithful people in the human side. And the teachers of the law had the highest, they had the highest authority in, in teaching the Bible, in interpreting the Bible, in understanding the Bible. But the God of the law caused them the God of the law calls them most severely. Let's look up the book of Matthew chapter 23, chapter 23, verse 36, verse 36. He cried out, You snake, you snake, you put a fireball. How will you escape being condemned to hell? You must absolutely that's why I feel bishops, I feel pastors, you must not be a snake, you must not be a blind guy, you must not be a hypocrite, you must not be a white, a white, a white wash the tomb, a white wash the tomb, a white wash the tomb. On the outside, you are so much beautiful, but on the inside, you are terrible. <laughs> you are terrible. You are filled of, of many kinds of greed. Many kinds of, of greed. You are filled with, filled with the law for money, things like that. And on the outside, you look so beautiful. But on the inside, you are full of dirty, dirty bones, corrupted, corrupted bones. You are full of, full of many kinds of greed, of, of vanity, vanity, for love, for money. And you must not be, you must not be. An old wine skin. Old white skin. Well, old wine skin. Okay. 
you must not be, you must not be old wise here, old wise here, okay? You must be pure, pure, you must be pure in heart, in heart, pure in heart. I am happy because of you. Why? Because, because this kind of deep spiritual knowledge or teaching, you are not accustomed, you are not familiar with this kind of deep spiritual teaching or preaching. But I am happy. You are accepting the land. This kind of spiritual, spiritual deep, deep teaching or preaching. Actually, this teaching, this teaching, I can, uh, is not my own. It's not my own. It's not my own. Doctor Nado, I, I, I can explain to you how, how. This kind of deep spiritual power teaching has come, has come to me. This is, this is not my own teaching. And for me, my dear patient and person, and for me, I have, I have asked myself for a long time. I have asked, asked God, my God and Savior for a long time. Father, am I not a hypocrite? Am I not a hypocrite? Even though I am needing many or some Bible study groups, even though I am needing some pray, prayer meeting, am I not a hypocrite? Am I not a hypocrite? Am I not a blind guy? Even though I am needing some Bible groups and the people, the people are praying me. Am I not a, am I not a blind guy in your sight? Father, forgive me, forgive me. Because I know I am a blind guy. And I don't want to be a snake. I don't want to be a snake in your sight. I don't want to be a white washed tomb. Father, help me. Help me, forgive me, and sustain me. I cried out. Those are heavenly Father. Long time, for a long time. Yeah? I don't want to be, I don't want to be all the wise here. Father, help me, help me, help me. Help me. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I know I am a blind guy. Sustain me. And help me, let me truly know you. Let me deeply know you. Let me know the Bible deeply. I'm to say, and God has finally listened to my cry, and I have become. I have become. You have whether you can believe or not. A true, a teacher, a teacher, a teacher of the true faith, a teacher of the true faith. For the Gentile, for the Gentile. Meaning all the people, all the people in the whole world, except, except through my people. When, when I read the book of the first Timothy, first Timothy, chapter 2, I was greatly surprised. I was greatly shocked. Oh, it is all about me. It is written about me myself. This is the very way I should go. This is my identity. For Timothy. For Timothy. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. So, all of you do not know me clearly. Do not know me clearly. So nobody can could introduce me, introduce nobody could introduce, introduce me to you clearly. But I myself can 
introduce myself to you. In the Bible, through the Bible, Paul Timothy, chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 7, verse 7. And for this purpose, for this purpose, I was appointed, I was appointed by God, I was appointed, I was appointed a herald, as a herald, a preacher, a herald, and an apostle in the times of the apostles, the highest speaker leader, a, a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. This is my faith also. This is not just what Apostle Paul is saying, but this is also what I am saying to you even now. I am telling the truth. I, I am not lying. And a teacher, a teacher of the true faith to the Gentiles. Amen. A teacher, a teacher of the true faith. Maybe. But I am convinced. I was appointed. I was appointed as a teacher. As a teacher of the true faith. Of the true faith to the Gentiles. To other people. Oh no. Follow me, my dear bishops. Follow me, my bishops and pastors. You must, you must enter the eternal, eternal kingdom of God. Okay? You must enter the eternal kingdom of God. You must, you must enter through, enter through the narrow gate. Amen. You must die every day, every day. Okay? You must deny yourself every day, every day. Amen. Amen. But nobody has like this. But from this time on, you must make every effort to, to deny yourself. To die. To die. Every day. Every day. Amen. And you must be taught the Bible, read the Bible a lot and as much as possible. As much as possible. As much as possible. If you have not yet read the whole Bible, but the ten times, the ten times, it's impossible. In, in, in my opinion, it's impossible for, for you to be a true bishop. How can you, how can you become a bishop, a true bishop, even in God's sight, who have not yet read the whole Bible, but the ten times? It's a command, a command, a command, a command. Okay? If a bishop have not yet read the whole Bible by the ten time, but he has already become a bishop, it's a comedy, comedy. Oh, a very great, weird comedy. The bishop is a high spiritual leader. Okay? He must be a true, a true, a true expert in the Bible. Amen. If not, he's a hypocrite. He, he's a hypocrite. A hypocrite can never, ever enter into the glory of God. God cannot be deceived by any man at all. It's up to you. From this time on, you must make every effort to read the Bible. Okay, as for me, if you, if some of you can ask me, if so, how many times for you have read? Okay. From this time on, I have read more than 20 chapters, so 24. Every year, more than 4. So, more than 5. 10 times, 5. 18. 20, 2000. More than 18. More than 18. And more than 18. So, more than 36, 36. So about 56 or 55 or 53 or 54. In any case, more than 55. Okay? More than In Burundi, I am asked a great, a great vision. Great vision. 
Okay? He had, he had more than one or more than four thousand, four or four, four hundred feet, or four hundred thirty, four hundred thirty churches, and thirty churches under his, under his authority, under his authority. But when I asked him, how many times have you read the whole Bible until now? I am now reading, reading the whole Bible, fifth, fifth, fifth time I am reading. Fifth, fifth, one, two, three, four, five. Now I am reading the whole Bible five times. I have read four times already, four times, but I am reading now fifth time. Really. Terrible, terrible. A must be a true expert in life. If not, he must, he must give up, he must give up being a bishop. So I strongly recommend to you, if you are a bishop or a pastor, in order to be a true expert, a true expert in the Bible, as a whole step. And the whole step to be a true expert in the Bible. You must read the whole Bible, not, the, not just the New Testament, but the whole Bible, at least for that first time. For that first time. I strongly recommend you to the first time. And if you really want to uh, understand this kind of deep spiritual, Future powerful knowledge of ours, you must be at least, at least more than 10 times. More than 10 times. It is very strange for a bishop not to have read more than 10 times. It's, it's very, very strange. From this time on, you can start. From this time on, you can start. Amen! From this time on, you can start. If, if it is too difficult for you to read all of a sudden, to read what it tells that all, you can start, you can start about with, with, with about 10 chapters, or 12 chapters, or 15 chapters, even 7 chapters, 4, four chapters from, 4 or 5 chapters from the Old Testament, uh, two or three chapters of the New Testament is up to you. It's up to you. But never stop. Never stop. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started with page three. End of page three. The kingdom of heaven is distinguished from paradise. From paradise. Number one, the kingdom of heaven is distinguished from paradise. From paradise. paradise. Today, do we be with me in paradise. in paradise? Amen. Okay? Today, you will be with me in paradise. To the rubble, on the right side. On the right side, Jesus is there. Today will be, will be, will be in paradise, in paradise. But when he was resurrected, after his, he was resurrected, when Mary, Mary, who want to want it to hold on to him, he said, do not hold on to me. I have not yet returned to father. I have not yet returned to father. That means I have not yet returned to the father, to the father's house. I have not yet returned to heaven. Returned to heaven. I have not yet returned to the kingdom of heaven. It's very clear. Paradise. And the eternal kingdom of heaven. 
must be must be distinguished. A different. These two are different. Number one, number one, the kingdom of heaven is distinguished from Canada. Amen. It's, it's, it must be very clear to you. The kingdom of heaven is distinguished from heaven. Those who identify the kingdom of heaven, the paradise, are based, are based on the conversation between the rabbi on the cross and Jesus. The rabbi said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. But Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus only said, I tell you the truth. Jesus did not mention, did not mention about the kingdom, about the kingdom of God at all. He just said, today you will be with me in paradise. He did not say, you will be in me with the kingdom, with my kingdom. Wow. Huh? With the Father's house, he did not say like this. He did say, today you will be with me in paradise, paradise. He did not mention, he did not even mention the kingdom of heaven or the, the Father's house. He did not mention my kingdom or the Father's kingdom. He did not mention the kingdom of God at all. He just said, you will be with me in heaven. You are connected, but they connected your kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, in paradise of this conversation. They connected, they connected, at random, as they please. They connected your kingdom, oh, your kingdom is paradise. It's a great mistake of this conversation. And they understood paradise and the kingdom of heaven in the same places. This is a great, a great mistake. However, the resurrected Jesus has shown us clearly that paradise and the kingdom of heaven are distinguished. Number two, number two, number two. On the day on the day when he was crucified, on the day when he was crucified, Jesus said he would go to paradise. Today, 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 that means on the day when he was crucified. Today you will be or you will be with me in paradise. Jesus said he would go to paradise. But he was resurrected on the third day. On the third day, and then he decided, do not hold on to me, do not hold on to me, for oh, I have not yet been told to father. I have not yet been told to father. Now let's look up the book of John chapter 20, chapter 20, verse 17, look at it, chapter 20. Chapter 20, verse 15, verse 15. Hold on, he said, why are you crying? Who is it we are looking for? Thinking he was the God's Lord. She said, man said. So, if you have carried him away, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. 16, Jesus said. Man. She turned toward him and cried out in Arabi, Rabboni, which means teacher. Then did was said, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet, I have not yet returned to Father. I have not yet returned to the Father's house, for I have not yet returned to heaven, to the kingdom of heaven. Go oh, instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my father and your father to 
my God and your God. When, when did Jesus, when did Jesus return to God? When did Jesus return to the Father's house? When did Jesus return, return to heaven? When, when did Jesus go to heaven? Go to the kingdom of heaven? When? When? Ten days later. No, ten days later. Think a little deeply. Not ten days later. After the resurrection. When he returned to heaven. When he he went to heaven. When he went to the eternal kingdom of heaven. When he went, when he returned to the Father, when he returned to the eternal kingdom of heaven. When he went to the eternal kingdom of heaven. Wow. It's a common sense. Huh? 
and verse 10. Verse 10. Okay, verse 9. Every said this, you take it up. You take it up before their very eye and a cloud. A cloud hit him. Why? All of a sudden, a cloud. It's not the it's not a paper cloud at all. He was a company. Many, 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 many heavenly souls. Many angels. And a cloud hit him from their side. They were looking intently up into the sky, into the sky, as he was going, as he was going to heaven. And suddenly, two men dressed in white stood beside him. Okay. Suddenly, two men, two angels dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven. Into heaven. So, after four days, you come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. He went, he went into heaven. 40 days later. 40 days later. After his revelation. 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. And then, after 10 days, after 10 days, the Holy Spirit has come up on, has come up on to the side of So, let's get back to on the day when he was crucified, he said he would go to paradise, but he was resurrected on the third day. On the third day, he was resurrected. So, for three days, he was in paradise, but on the third day, third day he was resurrected and appealed to his disciples. He said to his disciples, do not hold on to me. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to Father. I have not yet returned to heaven, to eternal kingdom of heaven. Jesus who died went to paradise, went to paradise. Jesus who died went first to paradise, but did not yet, did not yet go, did not yet return to Father, but to the kingdom of heaven. Likewise, Jesus distinguished, Jesus distinguished paradise and the kingdom of heaven. Likewise, Jesus distinguished paradise and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. He mentioned paradise, but after, the, after his resurrection, he said to his disciples, to men, to that hold on to me. I have not yet, I have not yet returned to Father. I have not yet returned to heaven. I have not yet returned to the Father or to the kingdom of heaven. To heaven. Likewise, Jesus distinguished paradise and the kingdom of heaven. Paradise and the place which is inside the universe. The point is, because he said, I have not yet returned to heaven. I have not yet returned to heaven. So, paradise is not, is not heaven. Paradise is not, is, is not heaven yet. But Jesus was, uh, Jesus stayed in paradise for some time. Maybe for three days, for three days. And after that, he was resurrected and appeared to the apostles. So, the place is, the place, paradise, and the place which is inside the uniform. Inside the uniform. Not yet heaven. The place which is inside the uniform is a limited space, limited space which is supposed to disappear together with the universe, with the universe where it disappears. This material world will disappear, will disappear, will, will burn up one day. 
or build walls and disappear. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, heaven is a place, is a place where believers will dwell with Jesus forever and ever. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is a place where believers, of course true believers, true Christians, you must clearly know only true, true, true. Not everyone, not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, not every Christian in name only will enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. But only, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Only true Christian. Only true Christian. But as you know, as almost all of us know very well in our time, it's very hard, it's very, very hard to find out, to find out a true man of faith. A true man of faith. Only one true, one single creature, only one single true, true faith, only one single man of truth. It's very, very, very difficult. Especially a true, a true Christian, a true pastor, a true servant of God, a true bishop who is, who is empty mind, who is empty mind about money. Okay? Who is empty mind, who is empty mind about money. You must also money. If you cannot, you can never be a true servant of God. Okay? Like a of vision, you must overcome. Okay? You must overcome. Okay? If you are defeated by money, you can never be a true servant of God. You can never enter the corner kingdom. Amen. Amen. As I told you, I was also extremely poor, extremely poor, extremely poor, literally extremely poor. But I have overcome money. I have overcome money. I have, I have tried to be black spiritually false. Amen. Even until now, even until now, I have tried to do false the things related to God, the things related to God. Uh, Reading the Bible, pray, and evangelize, and to do the work, the work of the church, then the life of To us, all some money. If not, you can never, ever be a true servant of God, and you can never enter the eternal kingdom. Amen. 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 And now, maybe, I'll speak especially to you, Filipinos, Filipinos, who love, who love their family so much. Terribly so much. Maybe the Holy Spirit, who is in me, is urging me to tell you, to tell you, and declare to you. Anyone? If anyone do not hate, do not hate, okay, and his father and mother and his wife and children and his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own son, he cannot be a disciple. Indeed, they cannot enter the eternal kingdom. Remember, it's, it's not my teaching. It's not my teaching. It is the teaching of Jesus Christ. Mm. Chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14. You must read this part, this passage again and again. And you must, you must decide. You must decide. 
cel ce vorbim o să-i fac. Lasă, Paul! You most people traveling in Jesus. And calling to them, he said, if anyone, if anyone come to me, eh, does not hate, does not hate your father and mother, okay, you love your father and mother the most, the best. His wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own love. It cannot be a disciple. It cannot be a true Christian, a true soul. It cannot have God in your own So you can decide. Post 37, and anyone? Uh, post about post 35, 36. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, why you must hate your father and mother? And why you must hate your wife and children? Why you must hate your brothers and sisters? Even your old man. Because they did not do. Because they did not do. The coming, coming near. Coming near to God. They are hindering you. And severely. They will be great sinners to your coming near, coming near to God. That's why right. you must fight. You must fight. You must fight. A good fight. Okay? Against the family member, you must overcome. You must overcome even your own life. You must overcome You must die, you must die, okay? You must die every day, every day you must die. Wake up, my pastors, my dear bishop. You must die, you must die. Amen, you must die. Every day, every day. Okay, you must die, you must deny yourself, you must deny yourself. From this time on, you must live only for Jesus. Only for the church, the body of Jesus Christ. Only for the soul, for the soul. Listen to me, my dear Pastor and Bishop. In your own country, how many people are living here? How many people? Eh? More than 100, four or more than 100, five or six million people. Okay? But what are you doing now? I have no idea. You are so much lazy. Eh? A lazy person can never enter eternal kingdom. Okay? You must go. You must go. You must be equipped. You must clothe with this kind of very demon, very spiritual, spiritual, powerful weapons. You must clothe with this kind of deep spiritual, divine knowledge and go out and make disciples. Okay? If you do not go, if you do not go, your people cannot be saved. Okay? You have many, many islands, islands. So, which one of you has to go to each island to make disciples? Amen. 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 Once again, verse chapter 14. You must have an idea. That's the vision. You must be his heart. You must have and you must make a strong decision. You must die. Yes. Even it's your own life. You must die. For Jesus Christ, for the Church of Jesus Christ, for the few more souls, for the few more souls who are preparing to go to hell, eternal fire. It cannot be like this. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. 
And anyone, anyone who does not carry his cross, carry his cross, you must carry your cross, your cross of mission. You must prepare to die, to die anytime, anywhere. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be a disciple. And, okay, you can be, continue it. And, 40. 30, 30. In the same way, in the same way, any of you who does not give up, who does not give up everything, yes, everything he has, cannot be my design. Okay. Remember. Any of you who does not give up, you must give up everything you have. Everything you have cannot be a disciple. In other words, you must be fully recognized by God. Fully recognized. Fully recognized. 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 Fully recognized by God. Who cannot be deceived by God? Then you you have given up. You gave up. You gave up everything. Everything you have, especially money. You must be empty mind. Empty mind, remember, my dear bishops and pastors, and so called servants of God, you must be empty mind, empty mind, okay? Empty mind about, about money, about money, okay? If not, you cannot become a, a, true, a true servant of God, you cannot become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. You must be organized, fully organized by God that you, you gave up everything you have, everything you have. Now you are living in your house, in your comfortable house. And me too, I am, I am living in a small apartment. But we must be fully by God, who cannot be deceived by any man. We must be alive with this guy and fully, really give up everything he had. Just like in the case of who? Yeah? The kills. Okay. Just like him, but especially. That's right. Okay. First of all, yeah. Including him, the best, the best example is Abraham. Okay? Abraham. He prepared to sacrifice, to sacrifice his, his one and only son. He did not, did not keep himself, keep his one and only son to sacrifice him to God, but God fully acknowledged. Do not lay a hand, do not lay a hand on him. I, I knew, I, I, I now know clearly that you have, you. You have killed your own man to sacrifice to be God fully organized. Okay? Even though Abraham, Abraham did not actually kill his only son, but God fully organized. Okay? You have killed 
feel yourself and let your eyes on you and fully acknowledge. Am I right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You can understand that eh? because you are very smart and very spiritual, spiritual. Amen. Likewise, my dear Bishops and Pastor, you must be fully organized. Like God, or this guy, and give up everything he has. Even though he's now living in, in a very comfortable apartment, in a nice, in a, in a nice house, etc. Even though he is now driving a nice car, actually, he is giving up. Everything you know. Likewise, you must you must give up. You must be able to give up. You must give up. You must be able to give up everything you have anytime. Anyway, you must be empty mind. You must be empty mind about everything in this world. Amen. About everything in this world. Especially money. Money. Amen. You must overcome money. Amen. 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 Okay, let's get back to our and now page three. But remember, Luke chapter 14, chapter 14, verse, verse 6, 25 to 35, you must not read this part, this passage again and again, and you must make a strong decision to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's get back to our end of page 3. Number 2. Number 2. The letter part. Likewise, likewise. Jesus distinguished paradise and the kingdom of heaven. Paradise and the place which is inside the world. Paradise is located inside the world. In limited space, which is supposed to disappear together with the whole universe when it disappears. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is a place where a believer will dwell with Jesus forever and ever. Remember, only true, really true Christian, only really true Christian in God's time will enter heaven. And you must deny yourself every day and you must Make every effort, literally every effort, to and the throne of heaven. Amen. Number three. Likewise, heaven is definitely distinct from paradise. But why is it so often identified with paradise? It's because of the different view of the universe. People are just aware of the atmosphere of heaven. It was pure heaven. It was pure heaven. Or uh, uh, the extent, the extent of the sky above the earth. It was the heaven of the sky. And it was. But let people, Christians, let the understanding of the sodium, the sodium, the heaven of God. The high heaven of angels, where they will enter. So tomorrow, tomorrow, we will uh, learn the more details about the third heaven. And remember, all of us, you, even only you, must absolutely enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. Only, only. He hopes that the will of God only he only a true creature, a true servant of God can enter the eternal kingdom. All the other natural Christians will never enter the eternal kingdom. All the other creatures in their own can Never enter the eternal glory of God. Amen. About that, let me explain to you tomorrow.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Excellent. Amen.